Hey yo, Antonio. There are some things worth sharing, and I believe the topic of this video is one of them. It's about glaucoma. You may have heard of it when visiting your optometrist, or you may perhaps have a relative who is suffering from it. But what is glaucoma, and how can I prepare myself for this disease? So in this video, we'll talk about what glaucoma is, how common it is in the population, and we'll explore how one can be prepared for it. Glaucoma is a progressive neurodegenerative disease, meaning that over time, nerves or neurons start to die. It affects the optic nerve, which is a large bundle of neurons that transfer messages from the eye to the brain. In a nutshell, think of the eye as a webcam connected to a computer. In the case of glaucoma, the optic nerve, which are the wires in the webcam, degrade over time and the information transfer between the two parties become unreliable. Although webcams can be easily replaced, our eyeballs are not, and repairing what is already damaged is near impossible. So it becomes paramount that we do our best to preserve the remaining eyesight we have, especially for those that are more susceptible. Glaucoma to this day is the leading cause of irreversible blindness in the developed world. In the US, if you are above the age of 40, then the likelihood of you having glaucoma is roughly around 3.5%. And while 3.5% doesn't sound like a big number, when you consider that irreversible blindness is on the line, then 3.5% suddenly feels like a huge number. That's like saying if you had a room of 1,000 people, 35 individuals in that group will eventually lose vision from glaucoma. How about this? 50% of those in developed countries with glaucoma are unaware of this disease, meaning that out of the 35 that will lose vision, only 17 of them are even aware of it. Glaucoma treatments typically involve the regular use of glaucoma medications to lower the eye pressure, or, as of recently, thanks to the advancement of modern technology, minimally invasive surgery has gained popularity. How do I know if I have glaucoma? Are there any major symptoms I should be aware of? Surprisingly, for something as destructive as glaucoma, it has almost no symptoms, and you'll only notice changes when it's already too late. This is because you'll only have vision changes once as many as 40% of your ganglion cells have died. A study in 2013 was conducted among 50 glaucoma patients to see what the world looked from their perspective. They were given the following selection of photos to best describe what they see. And the results are staggering. About half of the participants described their vision as having blurred parts in their periphery, followed by a quarter of the participants describing no change in their vision despite having mild vision loss. Which is to say that for those living with primary open angle glaucoma, they may not experience any visual symptoms and live a perfectly normal life despite having a confirmed diagnosis. However, if it goes unnoticed, the vision loss can be blinding. This is why it is so important for us to be able to detect glaucoma and monitor it so that these catastrophes do not occur. What is the mechanism behind this disease? Glaucoma is a neurodegenerative disease. You know, like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, that kind. For some unspecific reason, the brain degenerates, leading to either memory loss in Alzheimer's or motor function in Parkinson's. Same thing applies for glaucoma. For some unspecific reason, the retina, which is an extension of your brain, degenerates, leading to vision loss. At school, we're taught that at the back of our eyes, we have what is known as the retina. It captures light and delivers information to the brain. The retina comprises of 10 different layers and six different types of cells. Of those cells, glaucoma damages the retinal ganglion cells, which are located in these three layers also known as the ganglion cell complex. The role of the optometrist or ophthalmologist is to detect these changes in the retina and optic nerve to properly diagnose the disease and consider treatment if necessary. Over the years, health professionals have been blessed with modern technology and imaging techniques are getting better at detecting glaucoma by the day. Two pivotal machines that have revolutionized the management of glaucoma are the visual fields, which is a test for your peripheral vision, 
and the optical coherence tomography machine, which uses low frequency waves to map out the retina and optic nerve. They have become a quick, reliable and cost-effective method for screening for neuropathy such as glaucoma. Several OCT scans across time also allows you to calculate the rate of neuronal degeneration. If the nerves are degenerating quicker than normal, and there are other risk factors to suggest glaucoma, then perhaps we must investigate further as to how this must be managed. The reason for why these neurons degenerate is still up for debate. However, the simplified mechanism of glaucoma can be seen as a buildup of pressure in the anterior chamber leading to the damage of the optic nerve. But we'll see in a minute why this isn't 100% true. To add a span into the works, there are also different types of glaucoma, and for this reason, not being seen by an eye doctor can make it really difficult to diagnose, especially over the internet. The one thing I'd like you to take away from this video is that this disease exists, and that we should all be ready to tackle it once it does attack. And I would greatly appreciate it if you could also show support by liking this video for the algorithm so that more people can see it, and subscribing as I guarantee it'll be worthwhile. So what are the first steps we must take to prepare for glaucoma? The first step is to look at our risk factors and have an overall idea as to how susceptible we are to this disease. The more risk factors we have, the more likely we will develop glaucoma. These risk factors include your age, a family history of glaucoma, your genetic background, and elevated intraocular pressures. Not to be confused with high blood pressure, because that has nothing to do with it. The existence of any of these factors might determine an individual's risk to glaucoma, but they are not necessarily the cause of the condition. For example, you may have high intraocular pressures, but never develop glaucoma at all, but conversely, although rare, may go blind despite having normal intraocular pressures. Historically, the belief around glaucoma was that in the population, older individuals with high intraocular pressures were more susceptible to glaucoma. However, recent studies have also shown that a large proportion of these POAGs do not have high intraocular pressures. In fact, in Asia, about 76% of those with glaucoma did not have elevated pressures, while in Africa, 57% of those with POAG did not, and in the Caucasian population, about a third of glaucoma was not associated with high intraocular pressure. Perhaps a stronger determinant of risk is the family history. The more family members you have with glaucoma, the more likely you will also have it. A paper published in 1994 states that having a sibling with glaucoma increases your odds by almost four times, while having a parent with glaucoma increases your odds by 38%. And a paper in 2007 from Tasmania concluded that 60% of patients in their study also had a family member with glaucoma. Regardless of how many relatives you have with this disease, it is always a good idea to have your eyes tested at least once. Optometrists will assess the various risk factors and give you a more accurate probability. Keeping a record of your optic nerve and eye pressures in the form of routine eye tests is also crucial as gradual changes in the eye can be monitored through regular intervals rather than large changes across longer time frames. Can glaucoma be treated? What treatments are there at my disposal? Depending on where you are around the world, diagnosis and management of glaucoma can be different. But there are a few solutions that are available and they all have a common goal, which is to lower the intraocular pressure. These include the use of glaucoma eye drop medications or alternatively, surgery involving lasers or stents. Once the pressures are under control, the rate of neuronal degeneration should slow down and ideally stop. What creates this pressure in the first place? You see, the eye has a system of creating and draining fluid which helps facilitate nutrients in the anterior chamber. The fluid, which is known as aqueous humor, is created by the ciliary body and it makes its way through the pupil to finally be drained by the trabecular meshwork. If the production of fluid exceeds the drainage, then you have pressure buildup. 
The glaucoma eye drop medications help reduce the production of aqueous humor and surgeries are typically aimed at increasing the drainage outflow. But there you have it, a very quick summary of what glaucoma is and how it should be managed. If you learned something new or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.